Okay, uh, let's pick this back up. Thanks uh, for joining me again. Um, so we're going to pick up um, continuing with the Hermetic Principles by uh, highlighting the next one, uh, which is gender. Okay, so the idea of gender, right, is beneath the abyss, right, everything is caught between the poles, right, severity and mercy, uh, light and dark, male and female, you know, penetrator, penetrated, uh, or what have you. So the idea of gender, then, is that everything that's uh, between the poles is essentially um, an incomplete element seeking its counterpart, right? We're all, in one way or another, a fractured reflection of the one, and so therefore are, by nature, incomplete. And while, you know, there's all different kinds of ways that you can look at, what, you know, how we complete, you know, it, or when we become one, we have, when we gain knowledge and conversation with the holy guardian angel, are we now whole? When we're one with the divine, are we now whole? When we find our romantic soulmate counterpart, are we now whole? There's all different kinds of ways to look at that. But the idea is, like in our magical work, that you know we have that um, essentially another way you think about that is that everything has a problem to fix, right? Everything, everything, has, is, what? everything is a has a problem that needs fixing, oh, oh, sure. right? I mean, we're, we're in the the cause and effect down here, right? That you know ultimately. So, like in our magical work, uh, we think about um, you know completing the or f finding the, the missing piece or, or sort of or, or completing the puzzle, so to speak. So um, we can um, we also think about um, we uh, you know we keep touching on this, right? We keep talking about form plus force, right? You know, intellect. Versus emotion, uh, thought versus feelings. Um, we can also, uh, we wanna, you know, look use the Greeks. We talk, you know, about, you know, logos being thought. We talk about, you know, what ep epithemia, right, as being, you know, the emotion, and then. What's what's the, the, the and then, then the dynamic <coughs> would be will right? in accordance with will or fools. <coughs> so you know this plus this plus this equals that or or what have you is the dynamic that we're trying to uh, capitalize. But we can see that at play down in the next separate down here. So, um, number seven of the Severoth is Netzach, which means victory. And again, Venus is the planet of that Severoth. And then over here. Venus is the planet that represents victory? It is, and I'll, we'll talk about victory in a second. Um, but, uh, and then over here we've got Mercury, right? His number is eight, color is orange, and this is Hol, which means splendor. Okay, so, when we talk- Splendor? Splendor and victory. Now, what do they mean, <laughs> right? What does that mean? Okay, so, victory, th this, this, we'll, we'll start with victory, right? So, how does, so when we say love conquers all, Right, we were talking about that, right? The overcoming paradox, resolving polarity, going up the tree. Um, that love is the force that does that, right? Love is, I'm divided for love's sake, for the chance of union, uh, all that kind of stuff. So how, does, how, does, how is love victorious? Love is victorious when it surrenders. Surrenders to what? To, it's to what it needs to love. We don't pick what we love, do we? Do we? We wish we could, but we don't, right? A lot of times that gets picked for us. 
Usually it's our higher self that's picking what we love because it knew what we lo would love in the first place or what have you, who knows how it works. But the idea is that, um, and again, we can see form and force here in the intellect and the emotion. Obviously, Venus ties strongly to the emotions, all that sort of thing. But um, the idea of, um, and also, I suppose, do we want to do that yet? Well, that's probably going to get confusing to start putting where the, they fall on the paths too, but technically the, um, the Empress um, is Venus and the Tarot. Um, and she goes there while uh, the High Priestess is the Moon, which goes there. Anyway, so um, we can think about this in another way though. Let's think about this in, in a different way. When we're talking about, you know, finding the incomplete uh, and we're also talking about, well, we're talking about uh, the, uh, um, Excuse me. The uh, the alchemists had the concept of uh, solve coagula, right? The idea of disintegration and reintegration. Uh, the, the, the fire, right? Fire, that which it does not cleanse, it destroys, right? That's sort of that principle of the you know um, in the crucible of your own soul. In a way, you know, you're burning away your impurities uh, in a solve coagula to try to become. The, uh, the Philosopher's Stone, right? That's what we're really talking about. When we talk about the Philosopher's Stone, we can talk about it like it's just like a thing, like an object. But the Philosopher's Stone is the, also what the Hermetics would call the golden flower, right? The heart the chakra opens in you with that. And you are all now connected. You're just, it's enlightenment. You know, enlightenment, sure. Okay, so <laughs> that sounded flip. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to sound that way. Um, but uh, and again, so when we were talking about um, serpents and doves, right? Serpents rise and doves descend, but dragons, a winged serpent goes wherever it wants, right? Oh. Right, okay. So, um, and again, um, we can also, uh, where this was like the heart chakra, um, these two together are essentially the uh, the I'm gonna say this wrong. The Manipura, the will chakra. You have the yellow chakra, solar plexus chakra. You know, just that. Where you saw it, we're we'll getting there in a second. That's more the second. That's the next one down. Okay, so. Um, and again, um, so I, it's probably worth pointing out, because we were talking about that this, we, we see a lot of, because um, we're getting lower on the tree now. Now we're getting closer to like our reality, and we see a lot of this interplay a little more in our world. Um, you know, th thoughts versus feelings, uh, what's, what we think is right versus what we feel is right, and so on, right? Um, but uh, the path that connects these two is actually the Tower card, which is ruled by Mars. And, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, oftentimes when the Tower comes up in a tarot reading or whatever, and it spells disaster, right? Everyone's always afraid when it comes up. But essentially, it's talking about solve coagula, <coughs> smashing down the old uh, paradigm to build something new, right? That it has to, to make way for what comes next. So we see that here, we right? See, we see Mercury and, and do you mean that Mer Mercury and, and Venus are, are destroyed? I don't follow that. Okay, uh, so they're not destroying each other. I'm, I'm maybe, I, I talked on this in the first class. Let me try this again. Um, all right, so because the tree of life is divided by the two extreme poles, the, the pole of severity and the pole of mercy, right? Black and white, light, or well, dark, sorry, I did that backwards, dark and light. Uh, but regardless, everything is caught between the polarities. The binary world, we were just talking about the binary world, right? So um, as you want, to, as things rise up the tree, they have to resolve their, their perceived paradox. Perceived paradox. It looks like a paradox. F form and force seem like two separate things until you meld them and it just becomes the next work higher. Right? Does that, it's, that's why we're, I was trying to talk about like the nested world and the, you have to look at the polarity two different ways or it helps to look at it two different ways. Um, we can talk about this more if you're still a little confused after the class. But I uh, um, move on to the, to the next uh, hermetic principle. And we're almost done with 